We're on a road trip exploring the best things to do in Northern Ireland. We are at the most incredible scene at the Giant's Causeway. It doesn't seem real. It's really amazing to be here and see all of the stones that look like they were made by man, but it was actually made by nature's phenomenon. It's one giant Stairmaster. I'll never forget walking out there for the first time and just my jaw dropping because there's all these basalt columns, you know, they look like they've been placed there by an architect or maybe by somebody else. Yeah, legend has it that the giant Finn McCool made a giant causeway, hence the name, over to Scotland to fight with another giant. And you know what? I truly believe this because it looks more like an interlocking brick patio than something that Mother Nature made. Or it could be aliens. It does remind me a little bit of Superman's crystal cave. Right? Yeah, yeah, this is Fortress of Solitude. This, it does, it, it totally <laughs> reminds me of his Fortress of Solitude. It's incredible. The Giant's Causeway is really one of the coolest things I've ever seen in nature. I don't even understand how this was made. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I think it's uh, it's just too perfect to uh, not have been made by somebody. That's, yes. that's what I think. And you know, I was also really impressed with the sheer size of it. You know, like when you see it on pictures and stuff, it looks kind of small, but when you get there, wow, it really is all encompassing. Yeah, it's massive and a tip. Stay in the Giants Causeway Hotel right at the center there so that you can go early in the morning and at sunset, it's completely void of crowds because yeah. the rest of the day it is insanely busy with tour buses. For sure. Uh, what would you say is uh, one highlight for you, Deb? Well, the start of the drive was pretty impressive at the Carricka Reed Bridge. Heading off to the rope bridge at Carricka Reed. Now this is an old bridge that the fishermen used to use back in the day. It's been modernized now for tourists. Yeah, and I actually remember looking at those photos and going, I can't believe these guys walked across this bridge. I mean, it was just like treacherous. I don't know how many people probably lost their lives I think there. many did actually. That's crazy. Absolutely stunning scenery out here once you cross that bridge. When you take this bridge over, like the bridge is, is a highlight, yes, but when you get out there and you're standing on these massive, massive cliffs, you know, overlooking the ocean, you're, you really feel small, you know, and you look at really, you know, I really respect Mother Nature when I was standing there. Yeah, this is a wild coastal route. I'm telling you, the waves are pounding, the cliffs are giant. These are some of the highest sea cliffs in the world. And when you're standing up there, you're just in awe of the beauty, of the power, of the strength. And it's just something that you have to do. So we say the Crickery Bridge is a little fun little thing, not so scary anymore because it's made for tourists, yes. so it's safe. But get over to the other side and just check out the scenery. And if you do get a chance, I highly recommend Ballantoy Harbor. This was one of my favorite stops. Uh, you get really up and close to those waves crashing against those cliffs and it really does take your breath away when you're standing there. And the, the beauty about this place too is that tour buses can't get down there, right? So you either have to be in a car or one of the, well, one of the very small buses in order to get down there. So you're not fighting the people either. A photographer's dream. And for those Game of Thrones TV buffs out there, this was used at Theon Greyjoy's home. The harbour was used as a setting for the port of the Iron Islands. And it's cool because there's a picture of the scene and you can imagine yourself within the Game of Thrones. And it's pretty cool stop. You can have a little lunch, watch the waves crash, and off you go. Moving on. Getting ready to explore Strangford Lock in a speedboat, our very own. Strangford Lock has the highest and fastest tides in all of Europe, and it is a thrill to go out on the speedboat. The tour takes you along the grounds of Castle Ward and the coastal village, then out to the Ards Peninsula and the Irish Sea. When you are out, you get to ride the waves and have a thrill checking out the scenery and wildlife. 
the tide is coming out, hitting a cliff in the seabed, and then causing all of these ripples. It's crazy. It's a little intimidating. After the adrenaline is over, you get to explore the lock and you get to see a shipwreck that dates back to World War II. Great day on the water here. Ahoy! <laughs> After our jet boat tour, we went back in time and had our own Game of Thrones experience. The tree of hanging from Game of Thrones. Two quick deaths, one slow. We're here at Castle Ward at the Clear Sky Adventure Center and we're about to go on our Game of Thrones experience. I hope I don't lose my head. During your Winterfell experience, you get to dress up like the Starks in their fur cape. And then you get to reenact the scene where Rob Stark and Jon Snow taught Bran how to shoot a bow and arrow, right on the exact same place they shot the scenes for Winterfell in the first season of Game of Thrones. I'm about to learn how to shoot a bow properly. So let's see how good I do. Left hand out, hand on. So this is your bow arm. This is your arrow, which is going to go on like this. Turn your bow up right. Three fingers of your right hand is going to go on the tab there. Draw out to the corner of your smile. Look down the arrow to the pointy end, and then aim and let go. Oh, he beat me. Not a bad grouping I got going on here. Well, we did great here at the Game of Thrones archery experience. Uh, thank you very much, William. You were a great teacher. You're more than welcome here at Winterfell at any time. I welcome you as part of the Stark family. Ah, oh, thank you very much, and I'm ready. Now, we can't leave out the Dark Hedges. This is another Game of Thrones reference because Northern Ireland, uh, you know, a lot of Game of Thrones was, was shot there, so you can hit all these different places. We're at the Dark Hedges here in Northern Ireland. It's this massive grove of beech trees that tower and make sort of like a, a tree cave over top of this really long road. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a little bit mysterious and a little bit dark, hence probably the reason why Game yes. of Thrones chose it. Um, but it's also Northern Ireland's most photographed tourist site. So once again, having a car and doing our self-drive around the coastal route was really key because we could get there early in the morning when no one else was there and we had the dark hedges all to ourselves. And if you like castles, Dunluce Castle is another great stop in Northern Ireland there along the Causeway Coastal Route. Uh, again, they don't dress up their castles. You know, <laughs> this is just like it's all sort of falling down and it's the way it, it just has been preserved, or not preserved, but the way it is on these cliffs. And it's just overhanging on these cliffs. And you can just imagine what life would have been like there when people were living there. I think that's the charm of the castles in Ireland. They leave them as they were so you can really get a feel of that medieval, tough living, really dark, really scary, you know, it was tough And use your times. imagination, <laughs> Exactly. Right? Unless you stay in one of the castles that they've renovated, and then they're glorious. That's not so bad either. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. We're moving on. En route to Belfast on the Porta Ferry Ferry. We're in the Black Cab Tour in Belfast. Let's see what we see. The Black Taxi political tours are a great way to learn about Ireland's turbulent history where the Catholic and Protestant conflict only ended in the late 1990s. The, the, the main Protestant neighbourhoods, the Shanker Road, and the main Catholic neighbourhoods, the Falls Road. Falls Road and Shanker Road. Falls Shanker, Shanker Road. Road. Wow. But you'll find that a lot of our working class areas are still quite segregated. Many of the drivers actually lived during the conflict and have many personal stories to share. The tour begins in the Protestant neighborhood of Shankill Road. Here we had the chance to walk through the neighborhoods looking at the painted murals portraying pivotal moments throughout history. The murals commemorate those who fought and died in the conflict. Guys, she's mm -hmm. heard of the troubles here in Ireland. Guys, see the Freedom 2000? Mm -hmm. That's in reference to a prison. Now, when the conflict was on here, 
we had two types of prisoners. We had what were known as political prisoners, and then you had what were known as ODCs. It stood for ordinary, decent criminal. The second half of our tour took us to the Clenard Memorial at Falls Road. It's surprising to see just how close these two communities are. They are side by side, only divided by a long concrete wall that reaches as high as 45 feet. It's known as the Peace Wall. All of Ireland in general referred to them are called Ogla Bahar, which is the Irish language. To translate that, it means Irish volunteer. So when you remember the IRA, you carry the title of volunteer. This memorial pays respect to the IRA volunteers who lost their lives during the Troubles. If you want to understand the Troubles of Northern Ireland, this is an excellent tour to do so. On the Titanic Segway Tour. Titanic tour is pretty cool, man. Learning a lot of good history and getting to see it on the Segway. Right now, where I'm standing, if I was here in 1912, I'd be crushed because this is right where the Titanic sat when it was being built. The Titanic Segway tour takes you around the Belfast waterfront and along the site where the Titanic was built. It feels good being on a Segway again. It's a way to see the city. Yeah. This is the place where the Titanic left for its ill-fated voyage in 1912. It's a fun tour and you get to explore the giant piece of land that has a two-scale model of the ship mapped out so you can see just how massive it was. And that's how you ride a Segway. And we're off. It also takes you to the Titanic Studios where Game of Thrones was filmed. When you're done, make sure to check out the Titanic Museum to learn about the shipbuilding past of Belfast and see some artifacts from the Titanic herself. Uh, one place that you got to make sure that you go out to is the Masundan Temple. Yeah, when I read about the Masundan Temple, um, I was really curious because uh, what is this sort of odd structure doing out there sitting on basically a cliff all by itself? And you walk through a small settlement and remnants of a settlement that's there. And then, of course, it's sort of like a typical Irish scene through the long grass until you get out to the edge of this cliff. And there's a very small stone temple that's sitting there that just doesn't look like it belongs, but it's an incredible scene to photograph. Marble Arch Caves is a global geopark containing lakes, forests, and rolling drumlins. The star attraction is the underground cave system that can be explored with a guide. Take a walk to explore the underground rivers and these large cave systems containing beautiful formations. And that was the boat ride. There are mineral veils and coated walls, plus massive stalactites and stalagmites. The 75 minute tour takes you down 154 steps to this underground cave system. Those are some pretty cool caves, I have to say. We're out. that we have to uh, recommend is a little side trip that you can do during it and that's going out to Torhead Drive. I, I highly recommend it because as you get out to this point you stand there and it is the closest point to Scotland. Yep. Here at Torhead on the Causeway Coastal Drive and right there you can see oh you can almost touch it is Scotland. It's another <laughs> great uh, little side trip. Beautiful farmland, there's cows, there's scenery, there's hiking trails. The Giants Causeway Coastal Route is just one of the best things anyone can do. It's by far one of our favorite drives we've ever done. I highly recommend yeah, it. Yeah, if you love road trips, don't miss the Causeway Coastal Route in Northern Ireland. And those were our favorite things to do in Northern Ireland. If you have some suggestions, leave them in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to our channel because we put up a new video every weekend.